morning and welcome back from Midterms Week. I'm Rachel Barber. And I'm Nick Chang. As we've reported in the past, Measure D will give RHS $13 million. We go to Jake Lacasco to see what small renovations may hit the campus soon. The tax bond may fund resurfacing the pool deck, updating parts of the Hanson Field Stadium, and converting the former geometry and construction room into a project lead the way engineering space. The planning for these projects is in the very early stages. Um, right now our pool deck is really um, rough and old and it's not very nice to walk on or sit on or anything. And currently we kind of have an inability to host any events at our pool. Um, I think the addition of an engineering space is going to help because uh, this is my second year taking engineering and I can tell you that it sometimes gets a little crammed in there. So I think the new space is going to help a lot with um, just kind of like freeing space up. Athletic Director Emily Dodds is excited about the possible Hanson Field Stadium renovations. And so we're not having the visitors walk across campus to use the foyer bathrooms, those right. types of things. So the conversation literally has just started. We know the bond passed. We know we're going to get X amount of dollars. But even that, and like where's the flexibility? And all of these are just ideas. Friday's show will preview the third level Project Lead the Way courses, which could also benefit from Measure D funds. AP exams are coming soon. Teachers are offering after school study sessions to students enrolled in fall term AP courses. Junior Wafi Kridwan took AP Computer Science A and AP Art History in the fall and believes these study sessions help. I mean, those classes were back in the fall, and you know, the fact that I'm not taking the class right now, like, it's really hard to like focus and like remember everything. So the fact that we're doing these study sessions to spend time and review what we learned in the past and making sure we understand the content, um, yeah, that's definitely going to help me prepare for the exam in May. The deadline to sign up for AP exams is this Friday, March 24th. We now go to Josh Carson with sports. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of EOTSN. I'm Josh Carson. Following a section championship in 2015, the varsity baseball team fell on hard times last year with a 7-19 overall record. They look to return to their winning ways this season for a shot at sections again. Keegan Ness has the story. Went right back to him. Oh my gosh. After finishing 6-15 in league following the previous season's section championship, last season's struggles could be contributed to a lack of chemistry the team as a whole had. However, this season is quite different. I think that our team bonding is just like amazing so far. We all like each other. Last year was a little clicky. Now we're just a good group of guys having fun playing baseball. Yeah, last year we're, we we didn't get along very well. So I think uh, the fact that we get along as a team and we've bonded uh, really helps us. And uh, I don't know we just gotta come out and compete every day. I, I don't. I think last year we took a lot for granted because we were talented, but we didn't show that on the field. And so. Um, I think if we just come out and compete, we can, we can beat any team in our league. This year's goals are simple. Get back to winning ways with postseason hopes in mind. Obviously, make playoffs, but I think we got a chance of winning league, hang up banner in the gym. Just got to do what you got to do. You know, like Sean said, like we want to make playoffs, and uh, so my goal, my personal goal is to win league. Um, I think we have a shot to do it, so we're doing pretty good. And uh, win league, make playoffs, and then... Um, Hopefully get back to sections, that'd, that'd be nice. Improving last season's record and offensive capabilities is the team's first priority, and with a few new faces and a boosted sense of team-wide coordination, this year's team is once again developing into a prominent force in the CVC. Um, with guys on scoring, like guys on base and scoring position and stuff, it's important that you get those guys in and not leave them on base. And so I think we do a good job at putting the ball in play and scoring guys when we need to and uh, getting outs. We finish innings a lot better than we did last year. For EOTSN, Keegan Ness. The team takes on the Kasumas Oaks Wolfpack at home tonight. A current look at the CVC standings in the young season sees the Tigers in a four-way tie for first place, recently taking two out of three in their season series with Del Campo. And that's it on your home for Roseville High School Sports. Top plays, breakdowns, and more. I have the Tiger Sports Network, EOTSN. And now we go over to entertainment. Thanks, Josh. All controversies aside, there is no dispute over rather Beauty and the Beast is a phenomenal film. I assume that after the live-action letdown Cinderella that this was just another scheme on Disney's part to bank in on live-action remakes of a classic. I didn't have exceptionally low standards, but they weren't high either. It is easy to say that they were exceeded. The musical numbers were stunning. Emma Watson's voice sent chills up my spine. Her rendition of the Provincial Town song sounded as good, if not better, than the original cartoon. Our guest number is, nost is nostalgia galore. 
It brought one of the most magical scenes in Disney history to life and did so without a flaw. But beyond the classics, there are a few new ones thrown in to help develop some characters. I love this addition because it gave the movie more of that musical feel. I had unfair standards set for Emma to beat as Belle is one of my favorite Disney princesses and the one that I resonate with the most. She without a doubt made me proud. I honestly believe that no one else could have done as grand as the job as she did. The look and the personality down to a T. However, not so much the accent since Emma is British and Belle is a French princess. But other than that, I have no other complaints. Now we go back to news. Band students have been having jam sessions during war period. We go to Zach Jose with the story. A select group of band students have started to perform jazz numbers every day. RHS band members and junior Peyton Graves sees it as an opportunity to take accountability for producing individual music. Uh, they mean that we're practicing music like without a director. We're kind of taking it upon ourselves to play more music that we would like to, since we don't have a jazz band right now. So. Junior Avery Braley also appreciates the unity these jam sessions create. Um, unity, really. I think. Being able to make music with my friends just brings me closer to them and adds to the whole like band environment and I just I'm so glad to be a part of the band because they're all great people and they make me happy so Band students plan to continue these impromptu sessions. The Junior Prom Court Rally will be held during war this Friday in the Patty Baker Theater. That's it for us today on Eye of the Tiger. And remember, we're always on eyeofthetigernews.com. See you next time.